Well, look at this. Civvy's talking about a hot new game. So this game came out. You might have heard of it. It's a Half-Life 2 story, right? You got this evil soldier guy from Black Mesa, but you play as him, and you hunt down Gordon Freeman. After years of development and many delays, it's out. It's $25. Oh, it's on sale for like $21 right now. This thing got $12 on Indiegogo, allegedly had a shady greenlight campaign involving bots. Allegedly. Also allegedly had some stolen assets, and when I say allegedly, I mean just look at this shit on Steam. God damn. I played this on day one and the cutscenes didn't work. They were really heavily featured in the promotional material, so the game just starts and you pick up a pistol with almost no ammo, and if you don't take a step back first, you won't collect the knife. And you'll need that, because there's not much ammo around, and there's lots of zombies. Let's talk about this heads-up display, which doesn't stay on the screen for all that long, which is cool when you need to know how much health you have and someone isn't shooting you. The ammo counts go away too, unless you're using the Combine Pulse Rifle. It's not ideal. You don't even get the little icons when you pick stuff up, like weapons or ammo. So you don't know what you're picking up. I didn't know I had the knife at first or later, these Molotov cocktails. The inventory system is like a loadout where you put these weapons and items in slots, but you can't access them all at once and you can't use the shotgun and the sniper rifle at the same time because they're in the same slot. And I don't understand why they would do this in the first place. It adds nothing. You get past the zombies and I find this room and I keep looking for a place to go. Is it this door? No. Is it this one? No. These switches and these doors? No. Walk towards this wall-looking thing, and that opens up into what looks like a missile command center? Now, where are your eyes drawn in this room? What is the focal point? As a player, where do you think you should go? Down that ramp? Sure, but there's nothing there. Literally nothing. It's empty space. You're actually supposed to go to the door on the right, and that triggers a cutscene, but some of the cutscenes don't work. The thing that was really standing out in this game, the cutscenes, which is antithetical to how Half-Life games are made anyway, because it's about an unbroken first-person narrative. Yeah, I put this game down for a while because I looked at the Steam page and it said, Patch within 24 hours, which is not encouraging. Oh. Oh boy. Okay, let me- hold on, I'm gonna dust these off here. Fucking roll! <laughs> Let's get into the intro. You are a military guy with a troubled past. Your name is Mitchell. Who's the puffy guy who's the big blurry sex machine? Mitchell! And you joined the Marines before going into Black Mesa and getting brutally murdered by Gordon Freeman. But you get better. Whatever it takes. Whoever it takes. However long it takes before I die. I will fucking kill you. You won't. That's kind of a given. And if you do, that's the final nail in the coffin for Half-Life 3, am I right? That's my obligatory Half-Life 3 joke for this video. Please like and subscribe for more edgy topical humor. So the G-Man visits you in the hospital and says he wants you to kill Freeman, but not right now. And if the premise of this game is that the mysteriously powerful G-Man is going to send a human Marine in to take care of Gordon Freeman, who was responsible for more Marine deaths than space bugs, including nearly killing the man he's currently recruiting, I know Gordon Freeman is just a theoretical physicist, but there's a reason the G-Man uses him. Shit. I'm losing too much blood. I need to patch myself up. It's okay, there's a med pack right there. Oh. Hey! Oh, wait! What? Who is this asshole? I need that med Can he hear kit, me? Why did he just steal that and start running? What a dick. You chase him and he runs into a barnacle and gets killed, so obviously I run right into this trap the first time. Funny story, the game auto-saved me when the barnacle grabbed me, so I just kept reloading into certain death. Yeah, cool, fuck you too. Fucking roll! So I restart the level and take the elevator. I have no weapons yet. The name of the game is Outrun the Zombies, which is easy, and they're all really inorganically placed around the map as you run through it. I was stuck for a while because the game led me to this stack of tables that I couldn't move and I couldn't crouch under. Little did I know, this game doesn't just have crouch, it has something called prone, which is like crouch more, and that's how you get through that. The game doesn't tell you that. So I went around looking for other routes, and the only other door I could open was this office with a dead guy and an untextured keyboard. Fucking roll! Hey kids, spoiler alert, that's the only Gordon that's gonna show up in this video. I'm not kidding, Gordon Freeman appears nowhere in this game. But this isn't all just a bad dream, as the cutscene shows where this guy comes to inform you that the Seven Hour War is going on. An HECU? What are special forces doing here? Wait, hold on. Anyways, are you alone? Is there anyone else with you? That's Alex from I Hate Everything. That's a. That's a good channel, he does good work. He's playing someone in the United States National Guard because, yeah, sure, fuck me, come on. There is no easy way to put it, but as far as we know, we're under an alien invasion. That's a pretty good way of putting it, actually. Concise, informative. There's no more army. No more military. We're the only ones left. And by that he means there are a bunch of soldiers outside with unlimited ammo fighting an infinite wave of whatever the holy hell these pumpkin-headed monstrosities are. 
You don't have to stay here and fight, you just gotta find the right alleyway, and then you're up against a thousand of those goddamn things by yourself, and their weapons do one point of damage so you can just run past them. I go into this building and I'm like, where do I go now? Maybe one of these open doors. No, not that one. Not that one either. That's an invisible wall. Let's call the elevator and... Oh, it's gonna be like that, is it? I wait for the slowest elevator in the world, like in Half-Life 2 Episode 1, except without Alex, and with the shotgun that doesn't have the double-barreled alt-fire, the Half-Life shotgun that was so useful against these running zombies from Ravenholm that the game starts to endlessly spawn along with 10,000 other bullshit zombies that I don't even come into contact with during the fight. You might notice how visually different every map is from the one that came before it, and that's probably because all these different maps are cobbled together without any real cohesion since they don't even do the thing with the seamless level transitions from Half-Life. You're here, and then you're here, you're in Albuquerque, but then inside this building, and then you take the elevator, and everything is dark. And I mean dark. Just let me whip out the flashlight and... Oh. Pressing F doesn't work. I wonder what harebrained scheme they had here where they made the flashlight some other button besides F. That's absurd. That's ridiculous. Let me check the option. There's no flashlight. What I didn't know is that you have to go into your inventory and select the night vision goggles, which you equip like a weapon. Primary fire to put on and secondary fire to take off. Why? It could just be a fucking button, but okay, the game doesn't ever explain this. It's not like you pick something up and wonder, hey, what's that thing? And use it. It's just there. And even when you do pick something up, you don't know what it is because it's not like in Half-Life where you get a picture of what the thing is. Funny story, I paused the game to take down some notes, stop the recording, and then my computer overheated and shut down. My computer is kind of shit, but it's not overheat from a Source Engine game shit. We haven't even gotten to the worst parts. You end up in the canal areas of Albuquerque, which look like the canal areas of City 17. The game likes to do its battles like this, see? It's like a low-rent Serious Sam or Painkiller, where it spawns about 10 million enemies, way more than you have the resources to actually deal with, and eventually the exit opens up when you're done being punished for wanting to play a Half-Life game. Before this, it throws three hunters at you, these things from Half-Life 2 Episode 2, these bad motherfuckers, and there's this thing that happens with the AI in Source engine games. The AI needs to close the gap between the monsters and you. And if it can't do that, the monsters just sit there and attack you, unless you're out of range. In the city, you meet Adam. Adam's a black ops troop. He's not very trustworthy. I, I don't know. Everyone's evil in this game. It doesn't matter. So tell me, Mr. Black Ops, why should I trust you? You guys fucked us over at Black Mesa. Adam. What? My name, it's Adam. And we just followed orders. They sent us to do the job you guys failed to do. You killed your own people! Didn't you? By the time we got there, you guys already killed more than half the Black Mesa staff. That was different. How? Face it, Mitchell. I did nothing different than you. Yeah, following orders, Marines kill scientists, you kill Marines, it all worked out in the end, right? Who cares? What we're currently doing in this game is fighting through the Seven Hour War, which is the event that took place between Half-Life 1 and 2 where humanity tried to fight off the Combine and failed spectacularly. You even get a little 24-style ticking clock to show you how far in you are. And it turns out in exactly seven hours, President Keemstar, yes, President Keemstar, As your President and Commander-in-Chief, it is with a heavy heart that I'm informing you that we have made a strategic decision. Says we've surrendered, and you'd think that would be the end of the Combine fighting, but no, it's not. Those creatures can be many things, but they're not stupid. Do you know something we don't, Black Ops? Well, I guess I do. Well, maybe you should open your mouth and start talking. The aliens are coming! We've been compromised! Oh, hey, Pyrocynical! That's two British YouTubers playing American soldiers, cool. Once you meet all these Marines, you start fighting Combine again, and you're in this long tunnel where aliens pour from one end, and you and way too many NPC soldiers shoot aliens, and you don't have to do much. This fight is repeated several times, once in a tunnel, again in a subway, another time in a ship, it's trash. Oh yeah, also multiply this by four and you have the next level on the train platform. Infinitely respawning ammo and health, but god it's dull. This fucking bell never stops!
Then we get to the train level where you get a minigun with infinite ammo and also it regenerates your health for some reason. And you have to shoot down a random number of gunships. I don't know how it works. It's basically a turret section. There are a lot of those where you're behind a gun and I guess you can move in this one, but you shouldn't. Unless you stand in the path of the gunships and let them shoot you, they'll destroy the train car you're on. And I gotta laugh out of how you're still on top of it like fucking Wiley e. Coyote you haven't realized you're about to fall. It's good stuff. How do you get out of this level? Uh, I don't know exactly. I shot gunships down for like 20 minutes before going back into the train and triggering the end. I don't know why it happened, but whatever, I'll take it. Now comes my favorite part of the whole game, where you're sitting in a gunner seat of a Humvee while also driving that Humvee, and the truck that I'm escorting pushes me into a river. And I reload my game, and it crashes because the save is corrupted, so now I have to go shoot gunships on that fucking train again! And once you're through the desert, it looks like you go directly to the Pacific Northwest, the beautiful, scenic... Oh, hold on. Is anyone copy? We're stuck in the factory. We need help ASAP. You guys handle those. I'll go check the factory. Oh, I see a diner here. I see a mechanic. I see... Oh, the factory is all the way down the road, and I have to go on foot instead of in the Humvee. Cool. $21 for this game. So the next part of the game ended up being my least favorite because it was completely fucking broken. You go into this warehouse and one of these dicks sets a fire behind you so you can't leave. Not that I didn't try. Okay, here's what we do. We move all these health packs towards a fire and instead of dying, I'm gonna go through and just keep healing, you know? Nope, I hit the invisible wall. I don't, I can't, I can't even jump off the roof. So what's next? Well, when a game is this broken and reloading doesn't work and restarting doesn't work, no clip is where we go. So I no clip around the map and find even more zombies and head crabs, and then I enter into this parking lot area and it spawns a shitload of these guys who I kill. This is what I'm talking about when I say that these pre-designed levels don't fit the game at all. Because I have to run across this giant parking lot, then around the fenced off area that's around that parking lot, only to come back where I started, and I think, okay, maybe down this way, but no, that's an invisible wall. So I look around for about half an hour, and guess what? It was totally past that invisible wall. I'm not gonna freak out about this. I'm not. Gonna... Let me ask you, is that raw? This is not personal, this is professional! I can't fucking go any further! That is absolute dog shit. I hope you're fucking joking. Oh my god, that's not painted on the road! That's a white box on top of the road! That's a fucking brush! Let me communicate something really clear to you. It's raw! Come on! Yeah, it's fucking raw! It's raw! So now we're at the docks and you get chased by man hacks and hunters. And... Uh, it's another hour of me fucking around through a map. You climb a lighthouse for a gunship to blow it up because you have no way of taking it down or getting out of its way because these wooden boxes, you can't break the wooden boxes and you drop into this water and there's just voids of nothingness and rain underwater and you have to run around for a long ass time trying to find out where to go because there's no hints, no waypoints. You just, you dropped into a giant map getting pounded by endless monsters. I knew from the loading screen I had to get to a ship, but see the water in the second part starts hurting you even if you're not fucking standing in it. Welcome aboard, gentlemen. I am Captain Roosevelt. Tell me, who is in charge of all these warriors? Wait, they're not yours? How did they all get here before me then? Did the game skip a cutscene? Did the NPCs skip a cutscene? Your name, young man. I'm Sergeant. I have no interest in your rank. Your name. Who are you? Mitchell. 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 I am the sandwich. Yes, Mitchell. A name with many meanings. For some, the meaning is a gift from God. For others, who is like God? Which one are you, Mitchell? Are you a gift from God sent to save us? Or perhaps you are God himself come to doom our worthless lives? Perhaps. He's cursed. This game has some serious problems if I can talk about how bad its audio mixing is. Whoever is at the top of his command dies. Colonel Q, Sergeant Harvey. They're all dead. 
Okay, but you are fighting an overwhelming alien invasion force that took over the world in seven hours. That's not a curse. You made a deal with the devil. Okay, but why? And how the fuck does your ship work after the bridge explodes? And can we talk about Mitchell's scars? Did not Freeman just scratch him with his crowbar? Why? Then we get a lot of exposition over a black screen. Maybe there's a cutscene there that just doesn't work. Maybe not, but that black screen and narration lasts for over a minute before a title card that says three years later and that you're going to Alaska to City 9. Wait, there are titles now? This is Act 2? Does that say City 17? Aren't we going to City 9 in Alaska? Fucking roll! Hey, check this out. Snow goes on. Snow goes off. Snow goes on. Snow goes off, and if you go into an area they don't want you to, snow goes on. Until you're dead. I had high hopes for this part, but look at these textures, Jesus. Not just that, you spent so much time sprinting to nowhere that I was relieved when antlions started showing up. Not that you can't just sprint past them, but then, then we get to the snipers, who you can't kill. You just have to avoid them while crossing half the goddamn tundra. But that wasn't enough, because next we get these things. If you hit this searchlight at all, you basically get struck down by the hand of God. This is another level I spent an hour playing, and I tried everything. I could not find where I needed to go. Well, actually, I did, but the game didn't register it. You're supposed to go to this building here, and I did, but nothing happened. So I looked at a walkthrough online and found out that I had to bring up the console, right, and change the level manually, and then I could get inside the building. This is about the time I decided that this game was completely unreleasable, and that they should probably pull it from Steam. My money is already lost, but you, the viewer, and the rest of the gaming public can avoid this. This game is fundamentally broken, and not just here. Up to this point, the game crashed at least a dozen times. And not just because I went to the console to try to get the gravity gun and have some fun. This guy has a bunch of children that the Combine enslaved, and you're gonna free them all, Temple of Doom style, except you're just freeing them so they can come onto your ship and become part of a rebel military organization. Not the Resistance, mind you, a completely separate mercenary group. You're basically a warlord kidnapping children. I, I don't know if that's better. Okay, this Russian guy and his daughter are there, and because he does stuff for the Combine, they let his daughter not be a slave. These characters are important later, I promise. So now over a decade of time passes, this is represented by Mitchell's hair being shorter. They decide since the Combine is finally going to get around to draining the oceans that they should go to City 17. Maybe we might hunt down a Freeman. This is my favorite map in the game because it lasts 10 goddamn seconds. This is the wrong way. and you're in City 17, the very first map of Half-Life 2, repurposed. You have no weapons, and the Combine seemingly out of nowhere starts attacking you because the game needs a chase scene. These guys, oh, come on. You can climb certain ledges. Game does not tell you this. What you have to do, though, is you have to holster your weapon first before you can do this. There is a holster weapon command in the options, but it isn't bound to a key. So the developers, not only do they not tell you about that, you can't just find out intuitively. You have to go in the options. Fuck! Also, I gotta mention that you get captured by the Combine. You have to get captured by the Combine. You have to stop and let one of them hit you with their stick. Except this time they catch you and take you to this Russian guy from before, who also made a deal with the G-Man at some point. I know he sent you. Our mutual... friend. Wait, you know him? Know him. He offered me a deal. And when I refused to complete his deal, he threatened me with my own daughter. I'm not alone. I have a ship and an army and I'm ready to hand over all of it, to be placed under the Combine's command. That is a rich offer indeed. Please, excuse me for a little while. Jesus Christ, this game's actually gonna make me wait for this guy to go make a phone call. I'm not kidding, I have to walk around this office for almost a minute before the next cutscene plays. Thank you for your patience, Mr. Mitchell. Yeah, fuck you. Dr. Breen wanted me to inform you that he along with our collaborators. 
is impressed by your desire to hunt down Gordon Freeman. Anyway, they know where Freeman is. He's at Black Mesa East, placing this into the timeline right around when Gordon Freeman gets to Ravenholm in Half-Life 2. You wanna know what this is like? It's a fucking mess. It's a fucking mess, just like the other battle scenes. I get out of Black Mesa East and end up at the top of this elevator, where a double-barreled shotgun flies at me like it's Thor's fucking hammer. That's appropriate, a good double-barreled shotgun could save this game. This one's not bad, either. I'm surprised it doesn't take half an hour to reload, and it's way more effective than the other shotgun. I need a flashlight. It's too damn dark outside. Oh, okay. Now, now you're gonna need a flashlight. And he, no joke, duct tapes it to the end of the double-barreled shotgun so that you can't have light unless you're using it. And then it's back to sprinting past zombies at a terrible, unintuitive level where you go through a door that isn't locked as opposed to the three others that look just like it that are locked. You keep going and eventually you end up in the graveyard from the end of the Ravenholm chapter of Half-Life 2, but still no Gordon Freeman. You escape into a tomb and... Oh. Oh boy. Guys. I tried to fix this, I did, I messed with the video settings, I loaded a save, I restarted the game and reloaded the save. The next four maps, the lighting is completely broken. Holy shit, this is bad. Like, guys, just, just look, just look. Look! Look! What the fuck is this? Fucking roll! You shoot a bunch of resistance fighters before you get on a motorcycle that handles like ass, and you drive to Nova Prospect, except driving this motorcycle through this load zone crashes the game. I had to leave the bike and sprint through the tunnel. The next area had two motorcycles sitting there, so I didn't really have a problem, which leads me to believe that the developers knew that this was a problem and just didn't fix it. But then I drove into the next map, and it crashed again. So I went through on foot, and it was fine. I'm just playing the game as intended, guys. Are you telling me that your playtesters never went through those tunnels on that fucking bike? Unfortunately, they didn't give me a bike at the start of Nova Prospect, so I had to fucking sprint there. Great. Then Nova Prospect is a long-ass sprint through completely empty and uneventful rooms until you get to that part where Freeman teleports in Half-Life 2, except you just miss him, and the building shakes, and you shake, and you have to navigate out through all of this. Shit. You fall through a pipe and get washed into this void that's supposed to be water outside, but then the cutscene starts, and the Resistance captured you, and you're in a cell in Nova Prospect, and you have to run past these guys because you have no weapons. Russian guy's daughter helps you escape, but then Adam, do you remember Adam? He's back, and he blows her brains out after you've had a very deep discussion about heroes and villains ripped from the pages of a screenwriting 101 assignment. And I remember you saving those children. I always saw you as a hero after that day. Hero? <laughs> You're talking to a villain, my dear. The hero inside of me died many, many years ago when I was young. Isn't every villain a hero in their own story? Not in this one. But then Adam gets you out, and then he locks you in a tunnel so you can walk out into a completely different area where the G-Man is waiting so he can tell you it was actually Adam who fucked you up in Black Mesa like 15 years ago, on G-Man's orders, so that 15 years later he could get you to City 17, where you were going anyway. But then when you go after Freeman, but, but what the G-Man really wanted was for Adam to kill that guy's daughter and blame it on you so that the Combine will split their forces going after you, one angry dude who lives on the ocean, and Gordon Freeman. But Gordon Freeman was just in the teleport in Nova Prospect, and according to Half-Life, too. He and Alex are lost for two weeks. I think the teleport exploded just as we were porting out. Indeed, it did. And the repercussions were felt far and wide, but that was over a week ago. And during that time, the insurrection in City 17 happens. And so the Combine are gonna have their hands full with that, I think. So that they're splitting their forces up to go after Freeman, and Freeman isn't fucking there. He's lost in teleport limbo for two more weeks. That makes this entire thing completely fucking pointless. <sighs> We're here, finally. It's the last level, but don't think they won't drag it out. You enter this door and you're magically teleported to this completely different area, and you have to fend off Combine for 15 minutes so that Alex from I Hate Everything can come and rescue you. We'll be there in 15 minutes. 15? I don't think I, I can, can survive, survive that, that long. Look, you have to, Mitchell. Set some defenses. Be smart. I'll try my best. Good luck, old friend. God be with you. I know what you're saying, man. God be with you. And I have to put that in. It's not a choice. You can take care of the Combine down here with these turrets pretty easily. And you have to set up turrets downstairs, but they won't help with the one, and then two, and then three snipers that you have no way to kill and who will always hit you. But I don't care, I have god mode. We're almost done, and I just stopped and sat in this room here while all this was happening, making notes for the video, running the timer down, and out of curiosity, I wonder why I'm not getting flooded with soldiers and shot at, and it looks like the turrets downstairs are working. But no, it's not that. These soldiers aren't coming 
through the doorway. They took one of them out, but they can't seem to get in. But there's this one turret I placed that isn't actually doing anything. It's not firing at the Combine at all, and they're still not coming in. Once the clock runs out, the level fades out, and the last cutscene plays, and it's not too bad up to a point. It's kind of a cool oh shit moment when Adam sees that Mitchell's alive, but then Mitchell just kills Adam in a cutscene. Uh, Mitch, please. You betrayed me. Uh, you used me. Uh, oh, uh, you uh, fucked up uh, my face. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, and now... Uh, uh, Mitch, please. I, I can explain. You have my permission to die. G-Man flashes in and out because he's the architect of this thing that I charitably call a plan. And Mitchell is like... Turn the ship. We're going to Borealis. For those of you who are watching and you don't know what the Borealis is, well, it's a big ship from Aperture Laboratories, you know, the portal guys, and it mysteriously disappeared because of experimental technology. And you hear about it when Dr. Mossman is looking for it in Half-Life 2 Episode 2, but my question is, how the fuck does Mitchell know about it? How would he possibly know about that? This was something so important to the Resistance that we can assume Gordon and Alex were going after it after the events of Episode 2. And Gordon and Alex are still going to be lost for another two weeks. And how does he know about it? How does he know where it is? Wait, hold on. There's still more. I was almost finished with this shit, and I found out that there was a secret ending. I missed it because I didn't even think to die in the last level. I took some advice from someone I trusted. God be with you. It bit me right in the ass. And I didn't die. Which, honestly, with those snipers, I would have. I guess Mitchell deserved to die so I could catch this sweet ending here. <laughs> The fuck? Okay, we're gonna get in some Rick and Morty shit here. Meaning you're gonna think a terrible person on a comedy show has smart and insightful opinions about science and philosophy. But here's what I think. I think we're looking at Gordons from Parallel Dimensions, and when I said Gordon didn't appear in this game, now I really look like an asshole because there's seven of him. That's at least five more Gordons than I was expecting. This one, he died in the test chamber. This guy eaten by a bull squid shortly after the experiment. This one, he got killed by one of these tentacles. This one, also a tentacle. This dude blew up in a microwave accident shortly before the experiment. This one fell off the side of a cliff. This other one got past the first platform sections in Zen and killed himself. But this isn't the main attraction, kids. Because while this is dumb and makes no sense, we also have this. <laughs> Adrian? We didn't just get Freeman, we got Adrian Shepard from Half-Life Opposing Force, who I guess is also Mitchell's long-lost brother. He was in the first cutscene, but I didn't think it was important because it was never mentioned again. What an idiot I am. It's Adrian Shepard, who isn't a fucking character because he's a silent protagonist with no definable traits. You know what Adrian Shepard's face looks like? It looks like a fucking gas mask. It's hideous. Mitchell is listed in the credits as Mitchell Shepard, I just assumed Mitchell was his last name. I'd say this was sequel bait, but I think they should finish this game first. And also, hunt down the Shepherd? Uh, he's right there. Game over. You shouldn't have released this. It's broken. It's nonsensical. It's cobbled together from a hundred different places without any thought towards making it cohesive. It's like Freddy Krueger. It's the bastard son of a hundred maniacs. Even if you fix the bugs, there are deliberate design decisions in this game that are implemented as intended, like the terrible and completely unbalanced combat sections, the meandering and unintuitive levels. It is inexcusable to sell a game that actually requires me to cheat in order to complete it. And I'm not even talking about God mode. I'm talking about no clipping through invisible walls because the scripting is broken or having to change the maps to the console, or the entire lighting system shitting itself for a few maps. Didn't Valve play this? What the fuck was Valve doing? This is the worst thing I've ever played for this fairly young channel, but by god, it deserves the fires of hell for charging money for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> 